Everybody, happy Friday, gearing up for a trip to Baltimore for the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Ravens, 1 o'clock on Sunday. Let's take a look at the status report. Three names on this list. Two of them, uh, not a big surprise. Unfortunately, Marcus Gilbert is listed as doubtful. He has taken the wrong way this week in terms of his practice availability, not practicing today on Friday. Cody Sensible, who we could say his arrow is pointed up, he is listed as questionable. And then Artie Burns is a new name on this list. Uh, he left practice early on Friday. He said he rolled his ankle in the locker room today. So joining me now to talk about the status report and Friday's practice report is Bob Labriola. And when you look at the guys listed as questionable, Cody Sensible, as I said, full participant today. He kind of worked his way up this week in the right direction. He was filling in for Artie Burns. We know he was in the doghouse. So that's definitely a spot we're going to be watching. Yeah, uh, Missy. And, you know, you're looking at uh, the Steelers secondary and, you know, all of the different sub packages uh, that they like to run, that they want to run, that they've, they've implemented. And really, I think it kind of starting to solidify that pass defense a little bit. But now what you have uh, is, as, as it seems that, you know, guys are getting comfortable with their roles in the scheme. Now you have injuries, and so now you may have to do some, you know, mixing and matching. Uh, we'll have to see what Artie Burns' situation is. He said to you that, uh, you know, he's going to play on Sunday. Um, you hear that a lot from players right after they are injured because the adrenaline is flowing a little bit and they really don't want to miss the game. But, you know, the cold reality of how he feels when he wakes up tomorrow and then the, the trip to Baltimore uh, will have more to do with it than just that. And so if you remove Artie Burns from the equation, uh, Cody Sensabaugh uh, with the toe injury, uh, as you mentioned, he worked up to being a full participant in practice today. So I would look at him as a questionable with a zero pointed up. But, you know, it's a, it's a turf field at M&T Bank Stadium. Sometimes artificial surfaces are more difficult for guys with joint kind of injury, excuse me, joint kind of injuries. And so, you know, we're just going to have to see how, Co uh, how long Cody Sensabaugh can play if he does, how effective he can be if he does play, and then I would guess that the uh, contingency plan would involve Cam Sutton. All right, let's take a listen to Sensible in the locker room after practice on Friday. We'll see. I'm going to keep uh, mentally and physically preparing, and we'll see what Sunday brings. How does, does your toe limit you at all? How, how, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling pretty good. i uh, got to keep getting better, and uh, we'll see what happens Sunday. Did you go into the week? Was it just a matter of, you know, seeing how you wouldn't be able to run right or whatever? Uh, just taking it, just yeah. taking it a day at a time, and just wanted to get out there today and move around a little bit and see how it felt. All right, and shout out to our producer Gerard who found the video of where Cody Sensible was hurt on Sunday against the Browns, and he said he was able to do a lot. This was uh, what he what, was the two at sack where he was hoping it was going to be an interception. Said. Just kind of heard the whistle, and uh, that's kind of where he got it, the turf toe. So hopefully, as we said, because we don't know the status of Artie Burns, but we do know Cam Sutton is the guy that filled in for number 24 when he went out. So we'll have to wait and see on that one, Labs. Yeah, and you know, what, what I find kind of interesting, uh, Missy, and I think we're both of the same mind here, we're not really talking too much about Marcus Gilbert's situation. Uh, he, he, he's listed as doubtful, and you know, Marcus Gilbert is a good player, but um, I, don't, I won't say we've been spoiled, but I, I think that we can say that we've just become accustomed to the fact that Matt Filer can step in there and give an above-the-line kind of performance at a, uh, a difficult position, especially when you're playing a defense like the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, uh, Matt Filer is going to be dealing with Terrell Suggs uh, for a good part of the afternoon on Sunday, and, you know, Terrell Suggs always has evil intentions when it comes to to Ben Roethlisberger, but Matt Filer stepped in last week uh, against Miles Garrett, and Miles Garrett also has the same kind of evil intentions when it comes to Ben Roethlisberger, only he's about, I don't know, 15 years younger. So, uh, you know, Matt Filer, a guy that when training camp opened, I think uh, would, would have been considered by uh, fans and the media as uh, very much a borderline candidate even to make the roster. Uh, now he's a guy who is a, is seen as someone who can step in 
uh, as a starter at a difficult spot and not really ha uh, there isn't really much concern about his ability to handle his job. All right, and just two other quick notes in terms of the Steelers' practice report for Friday. Ben Roethlisberger was once again a full participant. We know on the left hand, the non-throwing hand, he has a fractured index finger. Uh, and the other guy was Cam Hayward, did not practice today. He is sick. So Bud Dupree was sick earlier in the week. Maybe it's something Cam got, but uh, Cam did not practice on Friday. He's not listed on the status report. I think 97 will be okay. Get your flu shots. <laughs> <laughs> Public All right. service announcement. I wore my uh, AFC North sweatshirt just for this matchup. So. AFC North football, Missy. That's it, what it is. It is a big one coming up on Sunday. All right, Lab, thanks so much for joining me. Mike Pursuta is on deck next after this break. All right, to be some classic AFC North football on Sunday at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. Mike Brasuda is joining me now with his plays to ponder for the Ravens. Hey, Mike. Thanks, Missy. The Steelers, of course, know what to expect from the Ravens, but we need to take a look at a couple of things anyway in advance of the rematch. And let's start with Lamar Jackson. We saw some of the read option gadgetry the first time. Here uh, is a great fake and Jackson keeping it. Around left end, he's showing his speed and his athleticism. The defense buys the run up the middle. He pulls the ball out at the last minute, and uh, away he goes. This guy is a threat on the ground, and the Steelers are going to have to be aware of that. Uh, he doesn't always keep it. Here he uh, gives the ball to Alex Collins, and uh, the Panthers do a poor job of tackling, and Collins takes it into the end zone. Uh, one thing we noticed, there's Joe Flacco up on the left. He lines up either left or right when these plays occur, and the Ravens never run it to Flacco's side. They either go up the middle or the other way. Here's an attempted pass. Jackson tries to throw on the run. He's got Willie Sneed wide open and one hops it to him. Jackson did have a touchdown pass late in this game and mop-up duty as a conventional quarterback, but that's a play Baltimore could have made but didn't. Here's a fake punt from the 10-yard line that crafty John Harbaugh, former special teams coach that he is, Runs a fake punt from the 10. It worked. The Ravens get called for an illegal shift. They didn't think there was an illegal shift. They sent this play into the league. Uh, they want some explanation as to why there's a penalty, but uh, they'll try anything from anywhere. Here you see Matthew Judon, one of those active Baltimore linebackers, getting out to the flat and making a tackle on receiver Devin Funches. Now, Funches is a big receiver, but that's still Judon, a linebacker, on him, and he makes the play. Here's a play out of the end zone for Carolina, and Baltimore doesn't make it. That Ravens defense has been penetrable all of a sudden. They've done a lot of good things this year, but a rare drop back pass where you hold the ball in the pocket. Baltimore showed a seven-man blitz, only brought four, didn't get there. Big play for Carolina. Here we see uh, the Ravens not protecting Joe Flacco despite being in max protection. That's rookie number one pick Hayden Hurst, the tight end number 81 not getting to the corner blitz. And then here we see Joe Flacco flushed from the pocket. And I don't know what he's thinking here. It's third and 17. He just throws it down the field and gets it picked off. Joe Flacco has had some great moments this season, but he's also had some plays that make you wonder what he was thinking. Uh, you can just run out of bounds here. There's nobody to throw the ball to. He just tosses it up for grabs and uh, Carolina able to grab it. Uh, that's what uh, the Ravens are capable of. Flacco's had some good moments, but uh, he can be flustered and rattled. That usually doesn't happen against the Steelers. Uh, we'll see what happens Sunday at M&T Bank Stadium. Thank you so much, and that is going to do it for this Friday edition of Steelers Live. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday at 4 p.m.